Hey YouTube, been a while, but I finally am doing it. This is a server room update. And we have a lot to go over, a lot has changed, and a lot will change. So, uh, in front of us, again, two racks, the same. However, if we open this up, the equipment is completely different. Now we are playing around with the, all of these servers with the exception of that one, are the R series or T series. And additionally, every server in this rack is now on 10 gig fiber. And this is my 10 gig switch which runs off Red Hat, layer three, 40 gig uh, input output. I don't have anything on that yet because uh, I just don't have any equipment running 40 gig currently. But we have operational here. On the top here is the original Cisco switch I had in it. And uh, it is no longer pushing any data. It's just solely for iDRAC uh, configurations. So it's pretty neat. And I'm actually gonna be getting rid of this because it's kind of a power hog and I don't need its performance anymore. I'm gonna be putting in just a, a standard IntelliNet uh, regular switch because the SFP is also only rated for gigabit. It is not compatible with 10 gig and I want everything to be 10 gig uh, in the future now. This here is just a filler, just to look somewhat interesting. Uh, it's just an old cable uh, system, but it looks kind of neat. But anyways, uh, so yeah, we are running, this is the PowerEdge T710. Currently this is only two cross, two sockets, uh, 48 gigs of RAM, and it's running at 16 cores, total eight on each processor. We have the MD3220 uh, PowerVolt, and this is running a total of 20 terabytes of storage. And then we have the R, PowerEdge R520, which is its controller. This is hosting the 322 power volt, and it's also being used for whatever I need it for. Currently, it's really its only job is to be a uh, drive host. The old three power edge 2950. Um, this will never leave the rack, as far as I know. So I got this thing in high school for 20 bucks, and I'm probably never gonna let it go. It's got a bunch of old servers I had on it from Minecraft and Gary's and all when I was first getting into servers, so this was my gateway drug into the server world. Loud as hell, it's a jet engine. Below it, we have an additional, a new Triplite battery backup, uh, UPS and uh, a rester, or surge rester, which has been much needed. The original one didn't even work anymore and it needed new batteries, so I just figured swap it out and uh, we got it going. Below that is the original R610, and this is my controller server. It runs pretty much the master of everything. So if I remote into the house from outside of the network, I run into this guy, and um, I, it's new. the new OS that it has on it is uh, running this whole rack, which is nice, and we'll go over that here in a sec. And then the original uh, PowerEdge R815 is still here with all of the two bays totaling um 80 terabytes and we're we're getting moving forward these are all originally uh power edge uh 502s i think um older servers i have to look in the original video i can't remember anyway uh so what's different os wise is we're no longer running windows server with the exception of this machine this will get moved over later, but for the time being, um, keeping it Windows Server because it's going to get, uh, all the data on this is gonna get moved to my 710 and then I will reintegrate this into the cluster. But um, keyword on that is cluster. We are now running Proxmox on everything and it's been a much easier operating system hardware wise. And wow, it's been really, phenomenal on the RAM usage and CPU usage and its ability to run virtual machines uh, is just in my in my sole opinion I feel like it's better than WinServer 
just because of the 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 user friendliness of Proxmox versus uh, Hyper-V. I'm gonna have to give that one to Hyper-V. But once you get everything set and running, I'm gonna give it to Proxmox all day because Proxmox, uh, first of all, it's free. And second of all, it has a really, really good management uh, um, ability to plus, and I can cluster all my servers. So if I'm running Proxmox, you don't know anything about Proxmox, but if I'm running Proxmox and I want to add, if, let's say I want to swap out one of these servers for a new server, I throw in my USB drive, boot Proxmox, or I can do it in the iDRAC, boot up Proxmox, load it up, get its IP set, and then add it to the cluster in Proxmox and have my R610 down here kind of manage everything, which is what it's doing. So uh, some of them are on, some of them are off. This one's running a backup right now, so it's currently on. And then this one's also, so like I said, they're all running Proxmox. And then this one's got a true uh, open NAS scale edition. And um, it's phenomenal. The read write speeds are amazing. And I don't know if it was just Windows Server acting up in the past, but uh, the NAS, new NAS OS is way faster than what server was giving me. So pretty sure that was some, some debacle on my end. I'm not huge with Windows Server, so running as a, as a SMB service, it wasn't doing all that much. But now it's just flawless. Everything is working super fast and perfect. So uh, if you're thinking about jumping into Proxmox, do it. Just know that you're going to be slamming your head against the table for the first day because there's a lot of different things going on and uh, we might do a video on that later down the road just to show what the deal is with it but if y'all want a proxmox video but there's plenty out there as far as the networking cabinet we're still the same in here unify um poe switch and i got my output on the dream machine pro is 10 gig so with the exception of this switch and my Cisco switch, everything in here is 10 gig internal, which I feel like I'm late to the to the to the game on that one, but uh, better late than never. Smart UPS is still here at the bottom. We're running two servers currently and we're only two bars up. And um, yeah, I know I'm not using AOL. That was a text message from my phone. I don't know if it was on the last video, but this rack has been since gotten rid of. There is uh, no need for it anymore, and it was just taking up space. And then the Panduits are the same, like we originally went over. And I now have this black duct here to really go over, really just kind of make all the wires look clean. And I took off all my wax string, and, and we're good there. Uh, there's my Southwestern Bell phones. I think we went over that in the last video. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. And this rack's been cleaned up. The Cisco lab is gone. Um, I did Cisco for about two weeks straight. I just sat here and messed with Cisco a little bit and uh, got it working. And then I just said, okay, I'm done. So got rid of it, sold it, and uh, it's now been gone. The rest of this is kind of just filler, but uh, still somewhat usable. Um, and uh, we're gonna be getting, hopefully in the future, I wanna get more of the raceway and finish extending it all the way up there and I need to do a drop down of a, uh, a wire uh, waterfall drop down. But the issue with this stuff is it is really expensive and they have lead times of like two to three weeks. So just for a six foot section, we're looking at about, oh, two, almost $200. $150, $250, definitely over $200 with shipping. So it is just nuts. And I actually found these on eBay for $5 a piece. They were selling whole boxes of them. So I grabbed some black ones and it looks fine. I'm not gonna mess with it. Future uh, improvements come into the room is electrical. I'm going to be redoing all of this, ripping out all the electrical lines here. And all of this black, uh, raceway and outlets are going to be gone and what we're going to be doing is we're going to pull our wires out here through metallic emt come over behind this guy over up over again and then we are going to have several 30 amp um 
outlets there and I'm going to be running the power straight up into the back of those outlets like they actually have them in data centers um, or they also have them on the ceilings but my ceiling's not big enough so I'm gonna just keep it on the wall and call it good. That's the deal with that and I can't wait for that. That's gonna be nice because then I won't have to have all of this wire down here, ugly wires looking like this, which I don't want. And um, yeah, looking forward to that. That's gonna be a big project. It's gonna be, everything's gonna be a uh, 12 gauge at least. And we'll go from there. So all this is the same though. Um, ground bar is the same. That's all the same. Interestingly, what I did now is, so this is Telco here. And if you noticed on the racks, they're now labeled with rack IDs. This guy being 100, 101, 102, 103. And the reason I have that is on my network configuration, each rack is identified in my network layout. So if I click on uh, R102, it shows me everything on that rack in the network and I can work with it if I need to. Uh, and I know what network I'm on. So if I'm on 102, I see all my servers. If I'm on 103, I see my cameras, I see the uh, switch, and then I see the uh, battery backup UPS at the bottom. And I really like the way that works. And then if I go to the telco option, I get my desktop here and the peripheral devices that are also being used on this. So uh, as far as updates, that's pretty much everything. And there was a commenter that got it right on the last video. I'm gonna have to give them a shout out in the uh, title below here, but uh, they got it right. This is the South Southwestern Bell logo. Um, I just thought that was kind of neat, so I did a stencil of it and I uh, got it put on there. So, hope you all enjoyed it. This is a quickie, um, but uh, I am very, very happy to get all these new servers mounted. This was an awesome steal I got in uh, San Diego uh, on Marketplace. And um, yeah, you always get some really good deals. If you want to get into the server stuff, start on Facebook Marketplace if you want to do Home Lab. Um, keep in mind this is very very power hungry this is why I don't have all of them on um, but I also don't recommend doing a configuration this build if you don't know what you're doing power wise and this sucker right here all servers on is probably pulling s anywhere from 3 kilowatt to 6 kilowatt so it is power hungry I mean I can't stress to you how 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 much power it eats up, which is why they're not on. There's only two on. So if you're gonna do something like this, please make sure you have the correct buses and power ratings for what you're doing. This power panel here is rated for 50 amps and it back it feeds off of the main. Um, but if the house power has an issue with it, this is not on or related to the house incoming power. Um, it's not on the house breaker, it's not on the, the only thing that it's on is the main lug outside, which is my 200 amp. This goes to the 50, and then this is all my 50, my, my uh, feed behind the wall is 50, and then all of these are technically 30 amps currently. So, amperage wise, my load balance is right where it needs to be. I'm a little heavy on bus one, but when I get all of my wires run up and over the cabinets and get the electrical wired up top there, um, it's going to be nine day difference and it'll be much easier to load balance everything. So I guess as far as my commenters go, one thing I could definitely use some information on is if I was to paint the room or redo some aesthetic stuff, what would y'all recommend? What would look cool? What would you not want to see? What would look cool? What would not look cool? Whether that be LEDs, paint jobs. Um, Obviously the wood right now looks kind of weird. I think about painting that like a gray color or maybe just white to help it blend in, but that's in the process. So we'll see how that works out. Um, other than that, hope you all enjoy the video. Not a whole lot to report, but like I said, new server rack, basically new, uh, toy, new fun toy ser servers for me. A lot of fun lab stuff I do all the time. I also want to let people know um, if y'all want to jump in on this and jump in my Discord server and ask questions about Proxmox or ask questions about what I know about Windows Server, which is not a lot, do it. Um, we have a lot of sessions where we jump in and we'll be late on at night, troubleshooting, breaking VMs, redoing VMs, uh, redoing physical servers, opening physical servers up, changing hardware. Um, sometimes I even do sessions on cam with that kind of stuff. So. Uh, 
if you all want to get into this and, and you got any questions on it or you have any input, jump into the, uh, the Discord server and the YouTube link. And um, that's really all there is. And I don't have a whole lot of views on these server videos, but I'm going to uh, continue to put them out because I think they're pretty neat and beneficial. I don't know of anybody that's done something this scale in their, their home uh, as far as server builds. So that being said, y'all have a great day.